Ok, lista Tati, dos para arriba. Con cuidado, corazón. Hay que pisar con cuidado. ¿Lista? Una, dos, tres. Bien. Con seguridad, Ángel. Agarra vuelta, agarra vuelo y fuga. Una, dos, vámonos. Eso. Muy bien, deténganla. Háblense. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today I will explain to you, using simple physics, how a gravity motor works and how it's possible. So, we must picture in our minds a pendulum like this. So, when you have it like this, it falls and If there's no friction, no air resistance, air friction, and there's no elasticity in physics that they teach you, for example, in a vacuum, with no friction, it would go to the same place, back and forth, forever. And there'd be no energy added or removed. So basically, when this falls, they tell you that when it goes to the other side and then back again, it's in the same state, but it's not. Let me explain. So, here we have a pendulum, and we'll call our weight W, and this is vertical line, and We'll say that this is 30 degrees. So we're holding on to this with our hands. And when we let this go, it kind of falls down like this. And eventually it comes up to the same place, same angle, 30 degrees. And the same height, call this H is zero. So they say the energy is conserved. There's frictional losses, of course, but uh, you don't have any energy added because it doesn't go any higher. So they say the state of the weight in position one is the same as in position two. But that's not the case because the force of gravity here is equal to mass times gravity, and it's downward. And the force of gravity here, force gravity is equal to mg downward, that's the same. The height in position one, zero, I guess this would be FG1, FG2, so H2 is zero, an equal sign. So they're the same, but the inertia here, uh, force inertia one, is equal to zero. So this starts to fall instantly as soon as we let go of it. But the force inertia 2 here is equal to minus mg, which is downward, or plus mg upward, uh, meaning that's confusing. Th these cancel each other out. So the total force 
fourth total two is equal to zero. And when we start at fourth total one is equal to mg in the downward direction. So in the second position, the object is standing still in the free air and it takes a second to go back down again. So it's actually in a neutral inertia state or levitation. Levitation. So when we started this weight our pendulum, see, as soon as you let go of it, it drops. And it's not obvious because it's a small weight and it's a small radius, but you notice that? I mean, it's more obvious if it's more vertical. So it starts to drop right away. So that as soon as we let go, it starts falling. But as soon as it gets to this position, it does not immediately change direction. So what you can do is that because this is in a neutral state of weightlessness, W-E-I-G-H-T-L-E-L-E-S-S, weightlessness, we can lift it up in that direction, uh, in that, that moment where, just where it's about weightless, we can lift it up and it doesn't weigh anything for a brief period of time. So you're limited by how, how, uh, how fast you can move it um, in that period of time. So obviously that's not enough to get a full working gravity motor. So you actually need to have a pendulum that uh, as soon as it, it goes down to here, uh, we call this bottom dead center. As soon as it starts going up, it's very easy to move it along the vector. It's going up. So as soon as it starts past here and just starts going up, then we can bring this up with basically no effort at all. And another thing that I think you can do um, is that when this is right here, you can actually move the, the, uh, the center pivot sideways. So the weight follows a path like down and then instead of going right back up it goes like this and then goes up and so this thing would follow on a path like this uh, so this weight goes like this something like that uh, so to summarize, this is actually in a neutral state and uh, you can move it, change it when it's in a neutral state. Think of things in terms of neutral. I'm going to take this concept a little bit further. The structure here holds this. So the downward force is transferred to the structure. And, uh, you know, through the, the tape measure, and it goes back up. Let's see, hopefully you can, yeah, you can see that on the camera. So that actually brings our downward force back up again. And if you want to do it quicker, you can do things like that. You see that? So, as soon as that's going up, then we can lift it way up in the air. And then gravity can bring it down and accelerate it again. So, 
another thing is that that you have to understand when you're building your gravity motor is that matter resists stretching and breaking. So matter stretches just the, the tiniest bit, but if this was all made out of jello, it would all fall apart. The same thing with a wheel. Um, here is a wheel. If that was made out of jello, the thing would fly apart because uh, jello is not very strong. So you're putting a stress on the matter, which is resisting, breaking, and stretching. Um, so it results in spin. What's the secret about spin? And, you know, here's another thing that gets on my nerves. They try to tell you in physics that, you know, when you have a top that's spinning, that there's like a torque like this, you know, going up this way and the right hand rule, blah, blah, blah. So if you have a top like... I don't have a top here. Let's pretend this was a top. If I spun that like that, as a top, it was it the right shape. Just stop for a second. When it slows down, it start, the top going, starts going like this, and then it falls. It falls over. Well, it's simple. Inertia only wants to go straight. So if an object has inertia, it wants to go straight. So this tape measure, it wants to go straight. Whatever direction it's going, it wants to go in that direction. But if you have the force transferred to the matter, through the matter, it's resisting, the stretching or breaking, then it turns. But it puts a stress on the matter. So you're extracting from the energy that holds the matter together. So, um, why is it that a top that's spinning like this if it starts to go like this, then it goes the other way. And you know, you can see it when it, it starts slowing down, then it starts wobbling, then it falls over. Well, it's simple because, um, let me get something that illustrates this better. Um, well, here's what I'll do. Let's just pretend that this tape measure is a, a, a section of the top that's spinning around as this goes, this goes down like this, so it, it starts to the top starts to tip over. Well, it's spinning fast, and it turns around. It pulls it the other way. So, and then and then uh, so it's up like this, and then it pulls it like that, and then it goes up. So every time the top starts falling a little bit to one side, it turns. So the inertia actually shifts to rebalance it. So it's kind of like gravity is like, I'm going to knock you over, and the top's like, you can't catch me. Because every time the gravity pulls the side of the top to one side, then the top spins, and then it, it, it brings the part that was lowest, falling downwards, back up again. So instead of pulling it down, you know, it turns up, you know, because it still has the same downward inertia as it's, you know, say it's, it's level and then the top gets wobbly. So it goes down while it's spinning so fast that as it starts to come up, then it's still pushing downwards. So you see the top is balancing itself. So all you need to know is that matter sticks together and um, inertia always goes straight. And it's that simple. There, you don't need this you know, a spinning thing makes a torque, blah, blah, blah. All right, so here's another thing. An angle grinder, okay. Let's plug this thing in. wants to move around in a weird pattern. Well, what's going on there? Well, you have this part is spinning this way, and it's pretty heavy, and you have this part spinning, and this disc isn't very heavy. It's actually about to fall off. Excuse me. So, uh, what's going on? Well, this matter 
is spinning, but it wants to go straight. So this matter goes that way a little bit, and then it gets pulled inside by the structure, and then it tries to go out. And then it gets pulled inside, or it gets pulled this way, you know. If, if this black part was the tip of the arrow of a vector, then it would, it's constantly getting pulled. As I say in physics, it's accelerating towards the center. Well, is an acceleration some kind of a harnessable force? Yeah, you're extracting energy from matter itself. If you uh, try to extract too much, the thing flies apart. So, when you have this thing spinning really fast, you know, uh, does it say how fast? 11,000 RPM. Uh, that's pretty fast. So, if this, you turn this this way, then this force here, it's going up this way, quickly changes into this force. Right? So, whenever you change it, if you just take this part spinning, then you turn it like this, and this force, this, this part, you know, this, think of it as little pieces, you know, each little piece, or if you just think that there was, you know, four weights around it, or two weights, it's much simpler. So if there was a weight on this like this, so there's an imaginary weight on here, and I turn this like this, well, since this is turning, the force going up quickly changes to a force going that other way. So it, it wants to balance, you know, the force that you put this way or this way, it wants to balance it out. Uh, so you get strange effects. And you have the same thing here, where this is heavy and it's spinning the other way. So let's plug that in again and play around with it. feels like it's levitating, but it's not. It's not levitating. It's, it's resisting change in the force. And that's why, because because the part that's spinning, you know, the heavier it is, you know, the more percentage of, uh, of the whole weight is spinning. So it's spinning one way, goes up, but as, as it's turning around, the force is balancing itself out. So it's that simple. You don't need these, uh, you know, what do they call it? angular momentum, and blah, blah, blah. It's just that matter holds together and inertia goes straight. Simple as.